when I think about today and then I think about 28 years from now, to me, the most important factor, and we're starting it, is just the advancement of energy. We're moving towards a world that's electrified everything from electric vehicles to homes that are shifting away from oil and gas heating. Energy providers are starting to wave the flag and saying, hey, you know, there could be some challenges in providing all the energy needed for this new electrified world. The main source of energy in the world right now is fossil fuels. But at some point, we're emitting so much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere that we're changing the environment. If the temperatures get too high, we're starting to talk about some really undesirable outcomes in terms of really adverse weather events. And so we have to limit the amount of carbon dioxide we're putting into the environment. We need other sources of energy. One of the ways to combat climate change is to have cleaner energy sources. And it's not just have a cleaner energy source because people have to switch to it. They're gonna follow what is cheaper, what is more convenient, what's easier. Solar panels, for example, are now becoming a thing that people actually are aware of and people want and they're affordable. Solar panels have been around for 141 years. So to me, technology takes a while not just to advance, not to become something that we can scale and make affordable, but for the general public to understand and buy into. We keep saying fusion is hard and we all know how hard it is and it needs all minds to work on it. We can't miss out on anyone. In addition, Fusion is gonna be there to serve all of us. So we need to all be involved in making it a reality. Human evolution and human technological evolution has been a progression. We've reached a stage where so many people are using energy, need energy, that it's unsustainable for us to continue to draw on our fossil fuel resources. Everything from solar, wind, hydro, through to geothermal and other sources of nuclear power. We can also connect the world through global supergrids that creates the internet of energy, connecting country to country with renewable energy sources and transferring that energy in a way that's very cheap and abundant. So places that struggle with energy can take energy from other places, just like transferring data on the internet from one side of the planet to another. Imagine wind turbines. They're gonna be constructed at the sea by humans in tough weather. You can't really predict whether you have big waves or stormy weather. Uh, imagine that robots could install the wind turbines. If you lose a robot, it doesn't really matter. But if you use a human, it's a catastrophe. Robots are really good at do mass production. Maybe we should use the robots to mass product wind turbines as we produce cars today. We use a lot of objects in our life. And if we're going for making everything smart, it's a lot of things we're making smart. And to make that smart, we're gonna put some tiny computers, there's a processor in it. Like, okay, we are gonna have a total of a trillion of these devices, which are called Internet of Things or IoT by 2035. Now, even half of it are powered by batteries, is which if you do the math, it's 237 million battery that needs to be replaced or recharged every day around the world. That's a lot. There's a rule in energy, right? Energy cannot be generated out of nothing and it cannot be nothing, like it cannot be diminished. It changes state to state. So if you're harvesting kinetic energy when you're walking, what's happening? You ate food, you got, you got energy from there and those energy you are converting to kinetic energy when you work. Now those kinetic energy can be converted to electrical energy that can power the device. So let's say you have a shoe which has a piezoelectric generator, which is often what we use to harvest kinetic energy. So if there's a movement, it generates energy. So each step you make, you can essentially power the sensors, the tiny sensors and the small processor in that shoe that can detect how many steps you took, what is your posture, and essentially also which direction you are going. So what we are working on now, I believe is the phase one, where we look at things that already has the potential to get rid of batteries. That does not require that much energy. The second phase will be that, okay, now we have made things that can be battery free. 
the things like our smartphone, how we can make that battery free, or how we can reduce the battery consumption of them. So let's say it can go ahead and instead of just being powered by batteries, half of the time being powered by the solar or even our body temperature because mostly in our pockets or in our hand. All science fiction, pop culture, is based in some form of reality. So then it makes sense to use these science fiction concepts to explain the real world analogs. Too real to be science fiction. Now, science fact. I mean, there's this old show that Gene Roddenberry did and it was about aliens coming to Earth. And in the opening credits, they showed, I think it was Egypt, and it was green. There was just fields of green out into the desert. And I really love that imagery because that's something that we could have um, if we have low-cost distributed fusion. Been working in aerospace, working on rockets, and while the technology for space is really sexy and is really exciting, there was this existential threat that was happening right outside the windows of where we worked where we said that we need to be doing something different. Is there something we can put our energy into to make, to deal with this, this threat that's happening right now? And that's where we started talking about fusion. Fusion is the power that's in the sun and the stars. I mean, it's, it's already in existence, it's in our universe. And what we're trying to do at ITER is to, to recreate the conditions of the sun and of the stars here on Earth. And that's the hardest part about making fusion a reality. Fusion energy is, is unique among the potential energy sources out there. It uses very few resources and they use very abundant resources. What fusion energy is, it's a direct application of Einstein's famous equation, E equals MC squared. It takes two light atoms and you overcome the repulsive magnetic forces of these two molecules. And if they get close enough for a long enough period of time, the strong atomic force takes over and fuses them. What that means is there's a mass change. And so E equals MC squared. That M is that change in mass times the speed of light squared. And that is the energy you get out of it. Fusion is, uh, is clean, it's accessible, and it's safe. It doesn't have the risks that fission has. You can't have a chain reaction. So it's not dangerous in that way at all. So fission, you're using neutrons to split big, heavy elements like uranium into smaller elements. And some of those elements are radioactive, and some of them can be radioactive for really long periods of time, like 10,000, 100,000 years. And that's where the waste issue comes from in nuclear fission. Fusion is kind of the opposite. Instead of splitting apart big, heavy elements, you're combining light elements. There's a bunch of different fusion architectures that have been created, devices that are meant to harness the energy that comes out of a fusion reaction. Most of those are thermonuclear, meaning the method at which they overcome the repulsive forces of the ions is temperature. The random motion generated by that heat is what's used to overcome those forces. What we are doing, what Avalanche Energy is doing differently, is we are not thermalizing these atoms we are putting them into engineered trajectories as a beam and have them collide with themselves. Similar physics that they have to overcome the repulsive magnetic forces of the ions, but very, very different architecture. This architecture allows us to do things far smaller. So right now we're targeting about five kilowatts electric. It's a nice quanta of energy that has a lot of early applications for a fusion reactor. So think about um, powering a small satellite, a mobile generator that you would pick up at Home Depot, those tend to be on the order of five kilowatts. So the core diameter we're talking about is 12 centimeters in diameter. Smaller is good for a bunch of different reasons. Smaller gives us uh, an easier path to be able to develop, test, and fail, iterate, fix, and do the next device. One of the biggest advantages you have for our, the consumers or being able to combat climate change is a reactor that's small enough to be able to deploy anywhere in the world and see the economies of scale. If you can do this test fail fix, you can go really quickly, you can learn really quickly and really start moving the needle quickly. So what's enabled by microfusion reactors is the ability to decarbonize different industries like maritime shipping, aviation, it enables things like microgrids instead of having to have the easements and the power lines for uh, some large central 
power generation. You can create it with the development. Basically, since 1973, our energy consumption has doubled. And you need energy to have a civilization. I mean, it would be easy to say, let's just cut back, but basically in order to do anything to be civilized, educated and healthy society, the need is there. Nuclear fusion really offers kind of the holy grail of what we could use as a source of energy for everyone on the planet. I see a world of plenty. I see a world where, you know, everyone has energy independence and energy security, where energy is, is cheap and allows everyone to have a really, really high standard of living. We're in a position where we can truly democratize energy. If you can generate the energy that you need on a daily basis, you've got less reliance on a grid, less reliance on having to pay for all of those services. It means that we're going to be more sustainable as neighborhoods, as cities and as countries. And ultimately, it means that the world is going to be able to power itself. And that's an absolute game changer.